Hi and welcome to another WPTEDS video. In this week's video, we're going to be taking a look at JetBlog. Now, JetBlog is a plugin, a commercial plugin that expands the functionality of Elementor. This gives you the ability to go in and choose four different sort of tools. We've got smart lists, smart tiles, text ticker, and a video playlist. But it really does give you a nice way of laying things out to really customize the way your blog looks. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate what it does. You can take a look at it and see if it's something you think would be useful for you in your WordPress development. I'm going to start this video by saying that I'm not sponsored by JetBlog. I haven't been asked to do this review or this demo. I've literally purchased this myself out of my own money, and I think it's something I'd like to share with you guys so you can take a look if you think it's something that would be useful for you. If you do think it'd be useful and you would like to support this channel, please use the affiliate links in the description below. They give a small percentage back to the channel, and anything you purchase through those links costs you no more money whatsoever. But it does give a small percentage back to help support the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the JetBlog plugin and what it does and how it works. Now this plugin has four distinct different tools available. You've got the ability to use their smart lists, their smart tiles, their text ticker and their video playlist. Each one of those has various different options that you can customize through Elementor. Now you don't need Elementor Pro so if you don't want to purchase the Pro version you just want to use the free version but you like what this does then you can use it with the free version Totally. There's no limitation to it. So let's take a look at what each one of these different tools does. I'll give you a brief overview of how you use them and you can sort of see the kind of thing that you can do. So let's just jump over to my test page. And as you can see, I've got Elementor open and I've got a couple of different widgets on screen already. So this is an example of this smart tiles widget. Now what this does is it gives you the ability to sort of pull in content from your posts and then display it in a nice visual fashion. So as you can see, I've got this sort of simple two column layout, left hand side has one image, right hand side has two images, each one of those then links through to the relevant post. So if you've got a blog or you've got content on your website and you've got a lot of content, this is a nice visual way of being able to represent content to display to the end user. You can focus content in there, you can do what you want really. So if we take a look at this widget in action, what I'll do is I'll come down and we'll create a new column for this or a new row for this. So we'll just add it a new row and we'll start from scratch. So let's just open the widgets up and you can see our jet elements. Each of the four elements is listed as part of the elemental panel on the left hand side. So what we need to do is drag and drop whichever widget we want to work with. So we're going to start with the smart post tiles. So just drag that up and over. You can see that now pulls in some basic information. We can now go through and configure exactly how we want that to display and what we want it to display. So we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we've got a series of nine different tiles that gives us nine variations of how we can lay things out. So we can easily pick and choose between any of those and it'll automatically update that to show us exactly what's going on. So let's just choose a style that we think is going to be kind of in keeping. So I'm going to choose the layout four. So you can see that now gives us a representation of that information. We've also got various different pieces of info we can turn on and off, we can style, we can control and so on. So things like the category that the actual post comes from, the date it was posted, a sort of brief synopsis of what the post is about and so on. We can also go through and customize the height, the maximum box width and so on. So let's just increase this up a little bit so we can see a little bit more. So let's set that to about 500. We can also set the maximum box width and this will kind of control the width of the main box. So you can see we can make that bigger or smaller so we can draw attention to it or reduce attention from there. So I just clear that and put that back to 50%. So we can customize that and tweak that. You can see we've got things like show post terms which is effectively pulling in the category that the content comes from. So we can disable or enable that. We can also go in later and style that any way we want. You can see show terms from and we've got the option to use categories or tags. So if we want to use tags, for example, we can use that and then we can sort of group things together based upon their tags. Put that back to categories. The number of terms we want to show, you can see we've got one through to four or all. We can go through and say the title maximum length in words. So in other words, if we want to sort of make sure that we don't have text that kind of goes all over the place, if we deal with longer titles, we can just go in and we can specify that we want that to be, for example, 10 words or something. We can also do the same with the excerpt length. We can set that to be anything we want. If we set it to zero, that will turn it off. So you can see once I do that, the excerpt disappears from the actual content itself. You can see we've got show excerpt on small boxes only on hover. So we select 
say 10 in there, put that back to 10, and we say, yes, we want to do that. We'll only set the excerpt when you take your mouse over. So you can customize and control how you want things to display. For me, I don't want to show any excerpt in this particular example. We've then got the option to go through and show the post meta, so which again, we can turn on and off. So if we don't want to put things like the date and things like that, we can get rid of that as well. If we do keep it on there, we've got additional options that allow us to go and customize that later on. The post meta, the same again, we can click on that. We can disable or enable it if we want to. If we enable it, you can see we've got things like the post meta, show the post author, the post date. We could even choose the icon that we want to use to display the date information. So some really nice, simple customization options there that allow you to really get in and start to fine tune and tweak this to where you want. We can even show comments on this. So again, depending upon how you want this to look and what content you want on there, you've just got a series of options you can just choose and then just enable or disable them and then customize them later on. We've also got the option for query controls. So if we were using categories, we can go through there and we can fine tune and cherry pick exactly what we're going to pull in. So we may have categories that we want to use specifically for this sort of post tile section where we can then just call those categories up and just use what we want. We can also say get posts from categories. We can even enable a carousel. So if we want to have more content in there, we can do that and then just use cursor arrows and things or control arrows to flip back and forth between the various different things. We can also control the number of slides that will be displayed. So we could say we'll have three slides we'll show the arrows on there we can specify where the arrows are going to display show them on hover only or to display them all the time you know you've got a whole range of control on how you want to do this I'm going to disable the carousel for now just to keep it to the three key ones that I want on there so next up you've got the styles tab which we can now go through and style the various different component elements of each of these different sort of tiles so you can see we can control the gap between the boxes if we want to have larger gaps we can easily do that. We want to bring it down and have zero gaps. We can do that as well. We can also apply padding to these so we can control the amount of padding and border types, border radius and so on, box shadows, the kind of things you should be used to now if you use Elementor at all. Most of those options are all still in here. You can see we've also got the option for box overlay. Now this is something that I kind of do like and I prefer to do it. You can see the example below that I've set it up so you've got to a sort of overlay that darkens it down and when you take your mouse over it highlights it. Key reason for this is mainly because I want the text that actually says what this particular article is about to stand off the background and might, might not always be the case because some backgrounds may be lighter, some darker and so on. So this gives me a sort of a visual way of doing that and it's very easy to do in the same fashion that you have with most things in Elementor. You can simply choose the box overlay and you can then go through the normal and the hover state and you can set gradients in there, you can set solid colors, transparency, however you want to style it and lay it out. And it's very, very easy. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to do the normal background. Simply click on there, choose a background color. We'll choose black, for example. Adjust the opacity to taste. Do the same then for hover. So you can click on the hover state. Go on to there. Again, choose black. And what we'll do is we'll set this to be slightly lighter. So now you'll find that if we just hit save to make sure we save those changes, when you mouse over, you'll see that it lightens up. So we get some visual feedback that something's going to happen if you click on it. Then we can go through, we can simply style the text the way we want it to. So you can see we close that down, we can go through the content. In there you can see we've got the title, the main box title, the post text and so on. You can easily come in, choose a different font color. We can go through the typography, the hover color, whatever we want to do. We can really come in, fine tune this and get it to lay out exactly how we want. So it's all very, very easy. Choose your colors. Choose the options, job done. Same goes to the meta. If we want to, we can see we can choose the icon size, the background color, the text color, and so on. So we can simply just choose that. And you can see it immediately reflects the changes on screen in front of us. That's pretty much how you can work with the tile, the post tiles. Now, this is a really cool way of laying things out, and I really like this. And it's the main reason why I bought this plugin. But let's take a look at some of the other options, some of the other widgets that are available as part of this jet blog. So next up, let's take a look at the smart posts list. Let's go and do the same thing again. Let's just add a new section in and we're just simply going to drag up the smart post list. We'll drop that in there. You can see we now get a similar kind of layout, but now it's kind of gives us some different options. You can see we've got some more information about the article. We've got a main article there. We've got some of the subsections on there. We can now go through and we can fine tune and tweak this to get it exactly how we'd like. So in much the same way as the smart tiles, we can go through and we can fine tune and configure this exactly how we'd like. So you can see we've got things like the featured post max width, so we can adjust that, make it larger or smaller. You can see we can adjust everything on there. 
very simple and easy so we'll set that back to 50 so we've got we started off the feature position we can set that to the top or the left mark the first post as featured we can just enable or disable that if we disable it all the posts are kind of displayed then as you'd expect we can change the quality of the actual thumbnail image that's going to be used we can simply come in and specify the number of columns all the different things you'd expect so you can see we've got number of columns we can set that to three for example and now we get a sort of simple grid layout of our posts Again, we can come down and we can choose all the different options that go with it, the post terms to display those, for example. We can also come in and query this like we could with the smart tiles to specify only the content we want to display on here. We'd also then go through into the style section and you can see we've got a whole range of different options on here on how we can configure and tweak every sort of aspect that you want of this particular layout. So again, if you've got a lot of content that you want to lay out in a very simple fashion and have a huge amount of control over how you style it, this is going to give you that control. So you really can get in and configure things nicely. I'd recommend if you'd like to see some examples of this, check out the JetBlog page, which we'll I'll link in the description below. They've got some great examples on, the, on how you can use this, how you can implement it, and the kind of styles you can create with it. Now next on the list, you've got the Smart Ticker. I've already created one and I'll show you what I've done this. So you can see this is my smart ticker. And what it really does is it's like a ticker tape. It'll just show you X number of sort of article titles or post titles that you can then go through and click on and go to view that page. Let's go and take a look at some of the options that are available with this. So you can see we've got the edit the text ticker. So we've got a whole range of different options. We can set widget titles. So you can see at the moment I've got that set to trending. That's shown in there. Then we've then got the sort of different pages that I've got linked through or the posts I've got linked through. We can go and control the post format, the date format. We can hide it on tablets and mobiles, the number of posts to show, what we want to use, whether it's categories or tags. We want to show a post thumbnail, tons of options. So if we say, yes, we want to show a thumbnail, for example, we now get the thumbnail of that particular post. We can disable that. We can resize it. We can hide it based upon the device that we're viewing it on. We can come over to the style section and again we've got a ton of options we want to change the background color we can do that we want to set a gradient on there we can do that you know you really can come in and very easily fine-tune the information that's displayed and again if you've got something that has a lot of information a lot of up-to-date information and you might be short on space then this ticker may be something that's very useful for me not so much so i can't see me using it really for me it was more a case of the post tiles that i wanted i just thought that would be a really good way of laying things out and then the final option we have, if we just come up and create a new section, is the ability to add in some video information. So let's come back to our widgets, and we've got the video playlist. So this is a great way of being able to display your actual playlists from things like YouTube. So you can see you need to go through and put information in, so you need to have a Google API key. That will give you information on there on how you can pull that information, how you can grab your API key. So if you've got a YouTube channel, you should be able to grab that information without too much of a fuss. You can then go through and create a great looking video playlist. So once you've done that, you can go through there and start adding extra items in. So you can see at the moment we've got one sample item in there. It's just the URL for the video. So I'm going to take this out and put a couple of videos in myself. So click to add an item and we'll just create another one in there so I just got to copy a couple of different links in so I'll pause the video come back once I've added a couple of extra links in so as you can see now we've got a nicely populated video list so what we can do is we can go through and take a look at some of the other options that are available so let's just jump down to the settings for example and you can see we can go through and configure things like the playlist height so if you want to change that say for example to 500 or we can change that adjust things that's fine select the video you can see that displays it on there we can sort of control it thumbnail list width again we can adjust the size of that make them larger or smaller whatever we want to do to fit in we can set their orientation if we want those to be vertical or horizontal so they sit below the video you can see we've got right or left position so we can really come in and fine-tune exactly how we want this to be set up so it's just choosing a video, we can click play and that'll start playing the video. You see with the counter suffix, again, a ton of different options to show things that we want to show on there, like item duration and things along those lines. So you can see on the right hand side, if we don't want to show the number of items in the list, we can check that and get rid of that. We can do things like show the item duration to get rid of or show up the time that the video lasts for, hide the thumbnail on tablets, a ton of different options. We can even disable the caching option. We then obviously got the option to go through and set up styling so we can adjust the canvas background. So let's just say, for example, we want to set this to be a sort of pale gray kind of color. Well, 
we can easily do that. We can style it, we can configure it any way we want, thumbnail background colors, so you can get this to look exactly how you want to fit in with the style and color scheme that you're using on the website that you're developing it on. Tons of options to go through and customize everything, right the way down to the thumbnails, the scroll bars, and so on and so forth. So hopefully what you can see is this is actually a pretty feature-rich, well-packed-out kind of plugin for Elementor. It gives you four key options or four different widgets, but each one of those has a ton of different functions, tools, layout options, and customization options to give you a really almost infinite level of optimization and customization to make sure it fits in with the site style that you're developing. For me, I really do like this. I hope they'll add in some extra functionality, especially with the things like the layout options, so you can have more control over that, more options available. But as a starting point, and for the money that you pay for it, I think it's a great plugin. I'd love them to see them to sort of switch over to becoming a subscription-based service, as opposed to having to purchase this from Code Canyon, which is part of the Envato Marketplace, where you have to buy a license for every single copy, and you only get six months worth of support on that. But on the flip side, you do have access to updates for life on there, so that's one good thing. But a subscription model, I think, would be much better, especially moving forward for a lot of people that develop websites for a living. I would love to harness the power of something like this. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful. I hope it's giving you an insight into how Jetblog could work for you. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content that's added every single week. If you do enjoy what we do, don't forget to hit that little bell icon to be notified every time a new video is released. And if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, or anything else you'd like to see covered on the channel in the future, please pop those in the comment section below. We love to hear from you. We love to sort of interact with you in those comment section. Well, until next time, take care.